Hello everybody and welcome to the M Little Programming Tutorial. Please drop a like on the video as it really helps the channel and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's get into it. So, so far in this series we've installed Python and PyCharm, the editor I will be using in this series, learned how to write a basic Hello World program, and in the previous video started working with variables, how to define them and how to output them. If you haven't seen those and you need to get, learn how to do those, go back and watch those videos. There'll be a link in the top right, right now, and in the description down below. In this video, we're going to be looking at lists. So what is a list in Python? Well, it's actually similar to the way lists work in other languages like C, C++, and Java. Let's think if you had a few pieces of data, like a few strings or a few numbers, and you wanted to group them together, you can put them in a list. So if we think of a real world example, like a series of groceries, what do you do with them? Well, as they have something in common, say for example, they are the groceries you need to buy at the supermarket, you'll probably group these together in a list. So how do we use lists in Python? Well, it's actually quite simple. Let's use that grocery example. Let's put apples, bananas and grapes into a list. So let's apply what we learned in the last video and declare a variable. We're going to call our variable groceries. Now, to define a list in Python, we start by opening a square bracket and then we want to type a few strings. So we open a string with double quotes, type the first item on our list, apples, close that string with double quotes and then use a comma to indicate to Python that this is the first item of the list. And then open another string to add a second item to the list, banana and then we'll add grapes. String variables can either be single or double quotes, by the way, I've just chosen to do mine with double quotes. And then we'll close the list with a closing square bracket. Let's print the groceries list and see what it outputs. So as you can see, the whole list is outputted. We can also create a list of numbers. This is pretty similar to how we just created a list of strings. We'll call our list numbers and open our square brackets to tell Python that this is a list and within, within the square brackets type comma separated numbers. We're going to put the numbers 4, 6, 1, 16 and 36 in the list. Let's try to print out that list. As you can see, a number list outputs in the same way as the list of strings. Lists in Python are indexable. What does that mean? It means that every item is assigned a number, which is its position, or as we call it, an index. The first item in the list index is 0. The second is 1, the third is 2, and so on and so forth. So let's take this list of numbers. Let's say we want to access the fifth item in the list. Let's assign it to a variable called fifth item so our code is self-descriptive. We then tell Python we want to access the numbers list by typing number, and then with no space, open square brackets. In the square brackets, we type the position we want to access. So in our case, we want to access the fifth element. So the position of the fifth element is 4, and then close the square bracket. Let's print the fifth item variable and we should see the number 36 outputted. A useful trick with accessing items in a list via indexing is to use the negative range. This allows us to access items via an index from the end of the list backwards. The last item in our list has the index 4 because it is the fifth item in the list. But at the same time, that same item also has the index minus 1. All the items in the list both have a positive and a negative index. In the same way that positive index start from 0 and increase by 1 for every item in the list, negative indexes start from minus 1 and decrease by 1 throughout the list. So the first item in our list will have the index minus 5. This is because our list has the size 5. Let's make a variable to demonstrate this. We'll call it first item. The syntax for negative and positive index is the same. So we'll type numbers and then in square brackets minus 1. When we run that, you'll see that Python outputs 4, as that's the value of the first item in our list. Another useful trick with accessing items in a list via indexing is to use what's called slicing. Slicing a list will extract a given portion of a list that we specify. We can use it to, for example, get every item from the second element in a list all the way to the end of the list. To demonstrate this, let's create the variable second onwards. We want to access the numbers list, so we type numbers, and then in square brackets, we want the second element, so 1, and then next to that, a colon. The colon indicates to Python that there is no end value, so we'll extract this section of the list from the second item onwards. To demonstrate this, let's just print second onwards. As you can see, it's printed 6, 1, 16 and 36, the second item in our list onwards. But let's take a moment to go back to declaring lists. We've seen both string and integer lists, and so clearly lists can be many types. But what about lists that contain different types within the same list? Is this possible? Let's declare a list called multiple type lists. We'll declare the list by opening square brackets. Inside the square brackets, we'll put the number 36 and the string mlittleprogramming. 
let's try to print the multi-value list. As you can see, this outputs, and so this is valid Python. This is the beauty of lists in Python. We can store pretty much whatever we like in them. This is not the case in other languages like Java, C, or C++. Let's take that, though, a bit further. We've defined a few lists already so far. What about having a list of lists? Is that possible? Let's define a variable called list of lists. Next, we'll define our list with those square brackets and take our numbers list and our groceries list, separated them via commas. And let's print the list of lists. We don't get an error message, and therefore this is valid Python. So you can see Python lists can pretty much throw anything you like, even other lists. Lists in Python also come with a series of methods that you can perform on them. Let's take a look at them. For this section, we're going to be using our numbers list. So we type numbers followed by a dot. In PyCharm, a list of available methods that you can do on that list will pop up. Another great property of lists in Python is that they are mutable. What does mutable mean? Mutable means that we can change the list after it's been defined for the first time. Why is this important? Well, let's look at the first method, append. The append function takes a single argument, which is the value of the element you want to add to the list. As we just mentioned, Python lists are mutable, which means the append function will be able to add this element to the end of the list. Let's append 27 to the numbers list. When we print the numbers list again, we'll see that 27 has been added to the end of the list. Now we'll go back to those methods that are available on a Python list. You may be thinking, what's the difference between insert and append? Well, as we just mentioned, append adds an item to the end of the list. On the other hand, insert allows you to customize where the item will be placed within the list. Insert takes two arguments. The first argument is the index where the item will be placed in the list. The second argument is the value of the item you want to add to the list. Let's add the number eight to the second place in the list. Now, when we output the numbers list again, you'll see the numbers list has the number eight as its second element. We've looked at adding items to the list. What about removing items from the list? You can see that in the list of methods, there's a remove method. This takes a singular argument, which is actually the value of the element that you want to remove from the list. So let's remove that eight we just looked, inserted. To do this, we'll type remove, and there's the argument eight. Let's print that, and we can see that the eight has been removed from the list. But can we remove items from a list via the elements index? You notice that there is a pop method on the available methods list. This can take one argument, that is the index of the element that you want to remove from the list. Let's remove the second item from the list. So the index of the second item in the list is one, and we know that the value of the second item in our list is six. When we, when we print this, you'll see that six has been removed from the list. We can also use pop without an index value. What happens when you don't use an index value when you're using pop? Well, if you've learned about data structures before, you'll have come across a data structure called stacks. If you haven't, then we'll go over them in more detail later on in the series, but I'll go over it briefly now. Imagine a pile of books, or to use the same terminology, a stack. That stack would have been assembled by putting the first book on the floor, second on top of that, and so on and so forth. Which means that the book at the top of the pile is the last book that was placed on the stack. Taking a book off the top of the stack is what we'd call popping a book off the stack. Popping removes the last element that was placed on the stack. So in our case, popping without an argument would remove the last element from the list. So if we output that, we'll see that the last element has been removed. What about if we want to delete multiple values from our list and not just one? This is actually not an available method that can be performed on a list. It's in fact a command. It's the delete command. So we type del. You'll see that pycharm changes the color of this word as it's a reserved word in Python. Then we call our numbers list and open square brackets. Here we can apply what we learned earlier and use slicing to tell Python that we want to remove the second item in the list onwards. So one, the index of our second item in the list, followed by a colon. As you can see, after we print that, there's only one item left in the list, which is our first item. We can also do the reverse. Python lists have the available method extends. Extends takes one argument that is a list of values that you want to add to the list. So we'll call it extends on our numbers list. To pass in a list to a method, we simply open square brackets inside the parentheses of the method we are calling. Inside the square brackets, we enter copper separated values. These values will be placed at the end of the list. And when we print that, you'll see that the numbers list has been extended by those values. And that just about wraps up this Python list tutorial. So if you enjoyed the video, please drop a like down below. If you have any questions, please drop a comment and I will answer it. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll catch you again for the next video. Have a great day.